And yeah, we are in the second week of our series today called Jesus Period. Sabi mo sa tabi mo, Jesus Period. And the reason why we have this series, if you may, is because we want to always go back to the things that really matter to us. I want to borrow an illustration from Pastor Steve, and I have here an object, if you may, that we would focus on. This is a salt shaker. We see this in restaurants mostly, kasi alam ko pag nasa bahay yung salt shaker natin yung deganon, di ba? <laughs> now, uh, Pastor Steve mentioned, especially in the States, I think, but we also see it here in the Philippines. In the restaurants, you would see this along with other condiments like a soy sauce, pag Asian, <laughs> and then salt and pepper, of course, somewhere in the middle of the table, right? And then, of course, if you go there and you dine in, you eat with them, you always ask for salt, you pass it, and then when you're done, you just leave it wherever you are. Pagkatapos yan, alis ka na. Tapos yung waiter or whoever's there in the restaurant will always put it back in the center. And that is what we call the salt shaker principle. We're in, even we know it's just natural in the progress of time that things will be out of the center. And it's just natural and if I may say, important that we always put things back in the center to the things that really matter. Now, this, just, this does not just talk about the church. It can also talk about our marriages. Remember, no mga bagong kasal pa lang, di ba? Oh, wow, this is the reason why I fell in love. But throughout years, somehow it has lost its way from the center. And then, ano nga ba? Bakit nga ba? Ba't nga ba magulo yung buhay ko ulit? <laughs> we need to somehow recenter or the salt shaker, bring it back to the center once again. In the same way with our church, we are 40 years already this year. And just so you know, kung di, di pa kayo familiar, we want to invite you to our 40th anniversary. As I've been saying, sabi mo sa katabi mo, happy anniversary. <laughs> so kahit single ka pa, masasabi mo na yung happy anniversary, di ba? At least mafe-feel mo, ang ganun pala feeling na may ka-anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> We want to encourage you, please, this is just once in a lifetime thing, please do register. I don't think, I don't know if we have a poster here, but just in case you go outside sa tapat ng elevator, you can register there. It's open for all. The slots are starting to fill up. And we want to encourage you to register. It's once in a lifetime, 40th, siguro yung susunod, 50th, so 10 years. At malamang yung 80th, baka wala na tayong lahat. <laughs> so we want to encourage you to join that uh, as well. So Jesus period, we are in the second week of our topic today. And the reason why we have this series is because as a movement, for 40 years, we have seen the goodness of God. But we want to somehow put things back in the center once again to the things that really matter to us as a church. If you consider victory as your spiritual family, as your church family, we know that we could do many things. Pwede tayong mag na artista. Pwede tayong pumasok sa ganitong ministry. Pwede natin gawin itong lahat. But it's important for us to put things back in the center once again to the things that matter. And it's not about fame and popularity or influence. It's about Jesus, period. And not just that. Right after this series and the next couple of series, all of those series are meant to put us back to the center. We're going to talk about the next generation. We're going to talk about the importance of reaching these people. Why? Because as we grow and throughout the years, it is crucial, if you may, to go back to the center. Today, we are going to continue our study in the book of Colossians. But before I go there, I just want to say, when we say Jesus period, what we are saying is that Christ is enough. That He is all that we need. Now, I want to somehow answer that statement and say, in our time today, talaga ba? Is it really? Is Christ really enough today? I mean, sure, during the time of the Bible, during the time of Paul, during the time of Jesus, they don't have this information, they don't have this technology, they don't have this knowledge. For sure, it's important back then, but now, with every advancement that humans made, baka naman, it, it merits to revisit Christianity. Maybe Christianity, Christianity should progress, kaya nga may quote-unquote progressive Christianity. Now, before we jump straight to the Word, I want to share somehow a framework that we will look at for the rest of the message today. And it involves three words. 
Head, heart, and hands. Can you say head? Can you say heart? Can you say hands? What do I mean? I believe all of us here, if we are being shaped as a person, it always involves those three. What are those three again? Head, heart, and hands. When I say head, what I mean is the truths, the beliefs, the knowledge, the data that we have. And in our time today, i-google mo na lang, di ba? <laughs> Just Google it. In fact, you can also AI everything. Make a 15-point sermon about Colossians. We have so much knowledge. There's many beliefs. There's many teaching. This is where education comes in. Many more knowledge in our time today. In our time today, marami na tayong alam. The sciences have progressed. Philosophies have evolved. So it might merit that maybe Christianity should also change. Head. The next one is heart. When I say heart, it talks about the influences, the emotions, and the desire. Do you notice the people or the forces that influence you? Usually, it is the influencers, TikTokers, creators, artists, entertainment, and there's nothing wrong there. What I'm trying to say is, there is somehow an influence to us. Sure, dati ang mga influences nila, the Roman gods, yung mga ganyan. Pero sa time natin ngayon, marami nang may alam eh. There are a lot of good teachers out there. There are a lot of degrees, people with degrees already that we could ascribe to. We could be influenced by that. So maybe, even with regards to the Word of God, there should be an upgrade. Head, heart, and what's the other one? Hands. Hands talk about the behavior, the application, the to-do, the things that gets translated into our real life. And we all know this, even in our phones, a lot of the things in our phones are apps or applications. You just go to your local bookstore and you would see a plethora of self-help books. So marami ni. So even with that, sure, ganito yung ginagawa dati sa Christianity, then maybe we could change some of them in our time today. The head, the heart, and the hands. You know, in the time of Paul, it's not really new. During the time of Paul, he was ministering to a context wherein they are, they are at the forefront of knowledge, of influences, of sciences, if you may. And yet, somehow, Paul has something to address or to say to them. And sometimes, as Christians, iniisip natin, hmm, baka mas madali mag-compromise na lang. Baguhin na lang lahat ng mga bagay. Or maybe we could just maybe adjust once again. But I want to make a point here that instead of doing that, Paul does the opposite of what we think we usually do. When we see trends and changes and what have you, I believe the answer is to, instead of being influenced or compromising to the times, we dig deeper to what the Word of God says. We're going to continue our study of the book of Colossians, and we are now in chapter 2. I'm going to read from chapter six, uh, verse 6 onwards. The Word of God says, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, so you must continue to follow Him. Let your roots grow, de- grow down into Him and let your lives be built on Him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of God in a human... uh, For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. Going to jump to verse 13. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against you and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. I'm going to jump to verse 20 onwards. You have died with Christ. 
and he has set you free from the spiritual powers of the world. So why should you keep on following the rules of the world such as don't touch, ha- don't handle, don't taste, don't touch? Such rules are mere human teachings about things that deteriorate as we use them. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, pious self-denial, and severe bodily discipline, but they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. This is God's word. Let's bow down our heads. Lord, we submit to your authority. I pray that when this word is preached, even though sometimes it may sound hard, to follow, I pray that we would surrender into it. Open our eyes, God, in Jesus' name, amen. To give us a context of what we read today, Paul wrote to the letter, uh, the, this letter to the church in Colossae, kaya nga to the Colossians, and it's one of those churches that he wrote to from prison that he did not get to visit. So hindi siya yung nagplant na tong church na to. He did not start the church, Someone did, Epaphras did. So nakikibalita lang siya. And he heard from Epaphras that the Colossians are people who love God. Tino mo yung katabi mo? Mukha ba niyang love si Lord? Mukha ba siyang in love kay Lord? Yan. Mukha lang siyang in love. <laughs> o mukha siyang na broken heart. <laughs> no, really. These people love God. They are full of faith. It just so happens when Epaphras was sharing the church to Colossae, uh, to Paul rather, he mentioned that there, is a, there are some problems that they're facing. There are some false teachers that started coming inside the church who affects their head, their heart, and their hands. What are the f- framework once again? Ano yung unang word? Head. What's the other one? Heart and hands. If you would look at the whole book, at least the chapter that we're looking at, if you would look here, Paul said that there's this people who starts putting on false beliefs, false teachings, philosophies, empty deceits. And then they are being influenced by teachers and even to his uh, words, somehow like elemental spirits, aka demonio. (laughs) They're being influenced like that. And they're doing all these weird things. The problem of Colossians is that some of the, they, they are experiencing Jewish legalism and weird pagan mysticism. Ngayon sa time natin ngayon, in our modern day, day time as a Christian, we don't have that anymore. We don't have Jewish legalism and um, weird angel worships anymore. But, and I want you to hear this, even though wala tayo nung problema ni Paul, the same spirit remains. Because the problem with all of this is that they say, yeah, Jesus is good, but he's not enough. There's still more to be done. In fact, oh uh, yeah, sure, Jesus worked out for you. That's nice. But you know what? There's this other knowledge that you should know. In short, Jesus is not enough. Ah, sure, you're doing this. Ah, you're free already from regulations. But you know what? You also need to do this. Yeah, Jesus is good, but it's not enough. Let me propose to you that in our modern time, even though there are no weird worships of this and that, the same spirit remains. The spirit wherein we say, yeah, Jesus is good, but he's not enough. Where do we see this? Maybe you're here and you're very religious, you're practicing all these rituals, but you have lost the heart. Yung ginagawa mo na lang, you're just doing it because you grew up into it. Nakasanayan mo na. Or maybe for some of you here, you, we say we are a Christian, we, we are surrendered to the Lord, but we still are very much superstitious. Feng shui, horoscope, new age thinking, manifesting. You know why that is not in line with God? Because you're saying, yeah, Christ is good. Pero gawin mo na rin to para sigurado. See, the same spirit remains. Jesus is good, but he's not enough. Or maybe you're here, you are a second, third generation Christian. And you saw Christianity from your grandparents or your parents. And you're saying, sure, it's good, it worked out for him, but I'm gonna do my own thing. It's not enough. 
the same spirit remains. And usually for us, in our time, sometimes we get tempted to adjust, to compromise. But what Paul will do is instead of doing that, he will go deeper to who Christ is. And we will look at, and we will see Paul use this phrase a lot, in Christ. Can you say in Christ? Christ. One more, louder. One, two, three, go. In Christ. So you would read, as we read through other script, uh, the other scriptures here, you would see him use in Christ, in him, with Christ, with him, along with Christ. So let's start off. I, I mentioned three words earlier. What are those three words again? Head, heart, hands. The Colossian church is affected by, the, by their belief, their influence, and their practice. And Paul is going to address that with this, in Christ. Let's start with the first one, with the head. I want to read Colossians 2, verses 2 to 4. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. In him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I'm telling you this so no one will deceive you with well-crafted arguments. What we observe here is this. In Christ, we find overflowing treasures of wisdom and knowledge. There is a richness in Christ. If you have a relationship with Jesus, He is the wisdom of God. You know, there is a fun fact. Alam you ba ko ano yung synonym or yung alias? How the early church calls Jesus. They call Jesus the Word. Or they call Jesus reason. Imagine that. For the early church, Jesus is reason. Jesus is wisdom. Jesus is knowledge. This is so different. Sometimes we think knowledge, wisdom, philosophy, what have you, are all things in the head, ideologies, data. But the Bible says wisdom, knowledge is a person. And it's not just a person. What what this person did is also wisdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 or 24, I think, it says there that the cross is the wisdom of God. So not only is Jesus' wisdom embodied, personified, but also Him dying on the cross is God's wisdom for all of us here. So in short, when you're asking God for wisdom, His best answer is Jesus and Him crucified. Yun yung wisdom ni God. And again, yes, to our world today, it's, it seems like it's a folly. But what Paul is trying to say that Christ is all you need. Now, don't get me wrong. Hindi to pilosopong answer, no? Christ is all I need. Af, sige nga, what's my course, Lord? What will I get for college? Gusto ko engineering ang sagot mo. That's not what I mean. Of course, it does not mean, sige Lord, anong pipiliin kong financial plan? Mga ganyan. So, no, that's not what it means when I say Christ is all that you need. What, we, what it means is, in a general sense, in a fundamental sense, in an existential sense, in an eternal sense, Christ is indeed all we need. You know, because of this, Paul gave a strong instruction. And it's this. Sabi niya sa verse 8, Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense. Sabi mo sa katabin mo, don't let anyone capture you. Tell the other person, wag kang papahuli. <laughs> don't let anyone capture you. Paul knows that there are so many new things that will come. And if you are here, you're a student, of course you will be exposed to that. In fact, even not as a student, all you need to do is open your phones. And we will all be exposed to new philosophies and new mindsets and all of those things. It's just natural. It is as it is. And yet Paul was saying, don't let anyone capture you. Listen to me on this. You know, 
with regards to philosophies and all, what Paul is saying is, don't let all of these things stop you from your relationship with God and others. How will you know if you have been captured by empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense? Do you want to know how? If a particular belief stops you from your relationship with God and others, then you have fallen to this trap. Example, political philosophy. Don't raise your hands, but who among here you know of people, especially in the last elections, when there is no agreement or consensus in who they will vote to, they're no longer in church. Philosophy. Yeah, Jesus is good, but it's not enough. What other philosophies are there? Self, help, philosophies, gender, philosophies, sexuality, philosophies, that we say this is more important than Jesus. Yeah, Jesus is good, pero ito pa eh. Ah, ito yung uso ngayon eh. trend ngayon eh. It's progressing already. And the moment we do that, we have been captured by that. Think about these beliefs or ideologies. Did you know that ideologies and beliefs won't die for you? Listen to me on this. I have yet to see a concept, a philosophy, an idea, a knowledge that will die for you. I have, for sure, I have seen people die for something they believe is true. I have seen people give their life for something that they think is true. I have seen people who would surrender and give all for a particular philosophy, but I have yet to see a philosophy die for a person. What, what the Bible is saying, the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God is a person who not only lived, but loved and died for you. And just in case you have not noticed, the salt shaker wala na sa gitna. And this is Paul's way of saying, go back to Christ. In Christ, you would find the wisdom of God. If maybe you're here and you're saying, ah, I need something deeper, I need something, you know, to make me grow more. No, 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 maybe you need to know Christ more. Knowing Christ more is not like how you review for school. Diba ganun tayo? Para mas maraming knowledge, magme-memorize ka. No, 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 that's not how it is. It's knowing a person. It's experiencing a person. It's opening yourself up and also receiving from the person. I can tell you my wife's birthday, hopefully tama, joke. <laughs> I can tell her, tell you her weight, but I won't. <laughs> I can tell her her likes and dislikes, but those are all knowledge. It takes a relationship to know, to really know. This is what it means. Some people just want all of that there, but knowledge puffs up, but it is love that builds up. And sometimes we know so much more that it has affected our worship to God and love for others. The moment na walan ka na ng passion kay God, dahil mas marami ka ng alam, you have fallen to this trap. Next, Colossians uh, verse Chapter 2, verses 9 to 10. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. You were dead because of your sins, and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all of our sins. He canceled the records of cha charges against us, and took, away, took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spirit where rulers and authorities, he shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. 
What, it, what is Paul trying to say here? If the first one is head, what's the second one? Heart. So the Colossian church is being influenced by these teachers who appear to have more knowledge. But actually, what Paul is saying, if you would look at that, is that these people are actually influenced by spiritual forces, a.k.a. demons. What Paul is saying is, before when you were not yet in Christ, we are all in the trap of sin and we are in the realm of darkness of the devil. But in Christ, we, are, we have been given victory over the powers of sin, death, and the devil. Jesus is not just a human being. He is fully man. That's why he's... And then, uh, he's fully God, rather. That's why he's able to defeat the devil. Imagine this. He canceled your wrongs. He disarmed the devil. The plan of the devil is to humiliate. Yurakan, uh, ang pagkatao ng Diyos. Through the cross. But the plot twist of it is that God's whole intent is this very instrument of my shame is your defeat. He used that to take away our sins. You are free already from the powers of sin and death. In fact, if you have Christ in your heart, your eternity is already secure. Eh, ba't pa ako nandito? Eh, kasi may purpose ka pa. Okay? But not only that, now because you're here, He has given you the power to live for Him. Remember when you were not yet a Christian and when you are tempted to do something wrong? Diba? Ang, ang mindset mo naman, hindi naman tama o mali. You don't think if something is right or wrong. What you are thinking is, is this going to be happy or not? Diba? Sino sa inyo, pan, naalala mo nung di ka pa Christiano? How do you think? Diba pag may nagawa, pag may, may natetempt ka, gagawin mo, ba't mo ginawa? Kasi masaya, diba? Tama? Nung naging Christian ka, when you became a Christian, suddenly, there's this temptation and you now are thinking, is it right or is it wrong? And sometimes you fall and you feel sorry and then you get back. You know, that very tension in your heart shows that you belong to God. Kasi kung kay, kay devil ka, hindi mo na pinag-iisipan kung tama o mali yan. Go lang. Pero kung meron conviction, na, ah, uh, I'm sorry I did something wrong. It is Christ telling you, you belong to Him. You know, for some of you here, you may be here and maybe the devil is oppressing you. How will you know you're being oppressed? May lies sa utak mo. You're not enough. You've sinned again. How dare you attend church? Grabe, nakakokondem yung pastor. Ayusin mo muna sarili mo. Those are all demonic forces. It's not Taylor Swift, Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, that's demonic. It's the whole thought that makes you forget who you are in Christ. Anything that makes you forget who you are in Christ and focuses on self is demonic. But God is telling you, you've been freed from that. I've defeated that on the cross. Once again, Paul is... Uh, putting it here on the center. Now, let me continue. Head, heart, what's the next one? Hands. Colossians 2, verse, verses 20 onwards. You have died with Christ, and He has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. So, why do you keep on following the rules of the world? Such as, don't handle, don't taste, don't touch. Such rules are mere human teachings about things that deteriorate as we use them. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, pious self-denial, and severe bodily discipline. But they provide no help in conquering a person's desires. Yung time kasi nun dati, because they have this belief and they're saying, Ah, hindi ko nagpipray ng ganito? Hindi ka nag-offer ng sacrifices? Ah, sure, Christ is good, but it's not enough. Now, in our time today, we may not be doing that. Maybe you're here and you're thinking, I'm free. But are you really free? 
what Paul is saying here is that in Christ, we have been freed to live for Him. As I've said, maybe for some of you, you're saying, I'm not enslaved, na man. I'm free. I make my own choices. But actually, I want to highlight a, ver- uh, a part of the verse here. It says in this verse, where is that? Uh, oops. Why do you so touch? There. It says here, so rules are made as a defense from devotion. No, no, wala yung verse. Asan yan? I'm too. Ayan. So why do you keep on following the rules of the world? For some of us here, we may be thinking, I'm free. I'm free. No one's forcing me. But there is such a thing as the rules of the world. What do I mean when I say rules of the world? You know, when you try to compare yourself to other people. Kailangan meron ka nito. And then if you don't have that, you feel bad. The rules of the world. Oh, you need this amount first because before you're important. You need this thing first before they, you listen, they listen to you. Dapat may relationship ka muna bago ka maging complete. <laughs> There's these pressures externally. Let me ask you, how many decisions have you done because you got pressured into it or you're... You're, or you made those decisions because you were insecure. And yet we say we're free. No, I'm free. I'm able to do it. I'm able to stop this anytime. The greatest delusion is that we think we're free when we're not. You know, this is something that I want to focus on, this particular verse. Even though Christ has set us free, to live for him. I want to focus on something. I want to spend a little bit more time here. Look at verse 23. These rules may seem wise and they re- because they require strong devotion, pious self-denial, and severe bodily discipline. Let me show that verse there. Oops, sorry. No, go back. Yeah. So it says there, that even as a person, it's not unnatural for us to put some self rules and regulations as long as we like it. Let me say that again. Sabi dito sa verse na to, these people, that is the problem of Paul in Colossae or in the Colossian church. These people are showing off wise advice and their life require strong devotion, pious self-denial, and severe bodily discipline. What do I mean by that? What's the sense of that? This just shows the reason why, and maybe you know of this. Mikilala ba kayong tao na hindi kristyano? A person who is not a Christian but they are more disciplined and better than us. May kilala kayong kristyano, ay, may kilala kayong tao na hindi naman kristyano, pero mas mabait pa sa'yo. It's because of this. There is something out there that a person can look good, wise, has strong devotion, wow, galing, self-denial, with bodily discipline, and yet misses the heart of God. It means like externally, it looks like there's nothing wrong with it. But Paul is saying, no, 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 you're missing the point. For some of us here, we think Christianity is a matter of good and bad. But the verse says, no. And it just shows that there are people who are not Christian who might be better than us. Because Christianity shows that no one is good. Even our best efforts does not count. Siguro to somehow get this even further, no? Magsishare ako ng story. Uh, okay, to get this further, I want to show these verses first. Look, they provide no help in conquering evil's desires. It's called, in ESV, it's called self-made religion. And there, they have no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. Because the difference is, 
It's about self. Again, siguro to somehow get this point further. Who among here, you know, that working out and looking good is not wrong? Tama ba ako? May kilala ba kayong friend na workout body? Talagang wow, grabe maka-work out as maayos si itsura. Tama? You know of people like that? Maybe you're like that? Don't worry, it's not about you, not judging. Alam ko hindi ikaw yun, okay? But here's a question. Bakit ka nag-work out? No, for sure, may isang sagot. Kasi gusto ko maging healthy. That's not wrong. Gusto ko maging good steward. Of course. Or if you're really honest, sometimes is, kasi gusto ko mapansin. And gusto ko mag-flirt. Externally, of course, it requires so much discipline. Kikising na maaga, nag-gym, nagtatakbo. There's nothing wrong there but the heart. The discipline does not stop the sinful desire of the flesh. It means like externally it looks okay, but it does nothing to the flesh. Wow. Now suddenly Christianity got so hard because everything we do here, we can miss the mark. Pwede ka mag-serve dito. Worship ka. Sa, nag, nagpa-practice ka, nag rehearse ka, hours and hours, but the reason why you're doing it is because you want to feel good. It requires so much discipline, pious self-denial, and people will say, wow, grabe, napaka-devoted mo, pero yung heart mo gratifies the self. Now, I want to share a particular example of myself. And ngayon palang sasabihin ko na, I wish I am always like this, <laughs> but I am not. <laughs> I wish I would do this always, but I don't. But in this particular instance, I think I got it right. An example of this is, what if may nakita kang sale? Oy. Sale, 50% off. Of course, we know in this world, saving is not bad, right? Planning is not bad, right? Pero minsan, we save because we're scared, right? Takot kang mawalan. Or we save because it gives you a certain sense of security, self. No, wait, it's not, nothing wrong there. But the other side is you can save or handle your finances because it's stewardship. The other one is generosity. May kilala kayong tao na nag, ano, may kilala kayong hindi Kristiyano pero mas generous pa sa atin. Oh, I, I have a lots of them. But I also know some of them they're very generous because they just want to feel good about themselves. Tiba, yung masabi kong at least ako pagbigay ako mabait ako eh. Self. Compared to the other one, you have experienced the love of God and you are moved with compassion. That's why you're giving. It's not even about you anymore. Notice that? You're thinking about them. Now, how about enjoyment? You magbibili ka. You're gonna purchase something. Homong you hear, you know, there's nothing wrong with enjoying, right? God has com- even commanded us to enjoy the wealth that He has given us, right? Just so you know, walang masama. But also, externally, it can look like greed <laughs> or lust. So, going back to my story. Um... Last year, I think, ito, sila kayo niyan, from the World Conference. So on our way back, there is a 9 to 10 hour, at least for us as a family, stopover in Qatar. Ang hirap pala na mahaba yung stopover sa isang lugar na shopping place, no? <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm there and I'm seeing things. Wow, parang nagka-third eye. <laughs> Kilala kayo, may mga nakikita, hindi dapat nakikita. Wow! <laughs> See, uh, ganyan, so... Some say it's cheap. When I computed, it's not. <laughs> but the, the, the feel of it, everyone around buying something, dala-dala bags, ganyan. Now, I have a little bit of money left coming from the trip. Um, and I'm so much tempted to buy something that I need. Oh, need na siya ngayon. <laughs> but remember, you, alam naman natin pag financial advice, di ba? Minsan, needs or wants, Right? 
But now it goes even beyond that. Does it gratify my flesh? So I'm, I'm honestly, alam ko medyo petty to, but when I was there, I was really struggling. Oh, parang bibili na ba ako? Papabili. Bibili ako, bibili ako. Lahat sa bumibili. <laughs> okay. Pabango, kailangan ko ng pabango. Mga ganyan. Uh, kailangan ko ng Toblerone. <laughs> and then I remember, particularly, somehow, this verse, you have died with Christ. So, at least at that moment, Again, as I said, I wish I do this all, all, always, <laughs> but I don't. But at that moment, I said, Sige, no, I won't. No, from a purely practical standpoint, oh, okay lang yan. It's not a need, it's not a want. But I know it did something in my heart. God was killing a sinful desire in my heart. So you may be here and you're God, you feel like God is telling you to do something. You know, it's not just because it's practical, but it's meant to kill an evil desire in our hearts. What I learned that time is that Christ is enough. My heart got recentered once again. Christ is enough, and everything else is a bonus. Everything. Wala namang mali kung bumili ako. Wala rin namang mali kung hindi. But at that moment, that decision of not buying killed something, a selfish indulgence in my flesh. We also realize Christ is all we need, both in this life and in eternity. He has given us all that we need. So having said all of these things, haba-haba, no? Colossians 2, verses 6 to 7, how should we live? So walk in Him. You know how we walk, right? It's one foot after the other. It's following Jesus. It's listening to His Word and obeying Him. Trusting Him and, and, and obeying Him. Doing it over and over again. That's where the progress comes. Sometimes, iba sa atin dito, I need more knowledge. I need more teaching. No, maybe you need more obedience. And that's how you get rooted. You grow stronger. Established in the faith. That's how you grow. And then it makes you abound in thanksgiving. If you are having a hard time saying thank you to God, it may mean that you are captured by the philosophies of this world. So walk in Him, rooted in Him, built up in Him. Now I want to end by a couple of stories. As you know, the past two weeks has been a very hard time for the whole Victory and Every Nation movement. Two great leaders went to be with the Lord. I personally somehow know both of them and got to spend time with them. The first one is our regional leader in Malaysia, Pastor Timothy Lo. He got to preach here once, I think. And um, he, preaches last, he preached his message and a couple of hours after that, he died. And you know what his preaching is about? You can find it in Spotify actually. It's about keeping the main thing, the main thing. And this is what he said. Let us keep the main thing, the main thing. And the main thing for God is to make disciples. Everything he learned, he has a master's program, he is both a businessman and a pastor. Everything he learned, every influence he got, everything he does, it's just for two things, to honor God and to make disciples. Now, the next one, of course, as you are aware of, is our very own Bishop, Bishop Ferdi Kaviling. And of course, we know Bishop as the running pastor. Just in case you're not aware, he ran 50 kilometers for 50 days, straight days, at the age of 50. He started off in Mindanao, he ran all the way up to Apari. And when I say run, hindi siya yung parang run ng two kilometers tapos tricycle after. No, I mean like he ran. <laughs> he, ran he, he, he said at one time, he's, he will stop when it's done, not because, if, not because when he's tired. <laughs> he ran for those who can't. Everything he learned, every influence he got, and every effort he does, he does just for the honor of God and to make disciples. And of course, if you know Bishop Ferdi, 
He knows his heart is leaders and next generation. Pastor Dennis gave a powerful word during the memorial service. He was in tears, I was in tears. But I want to share the story of Pastor Rico, our missionary in Panama. He used to be our senior pastor in Ortigas. That's Vico, one of the kids there. He's just recounting the investment made by Bishop Ferdi of putting, on, putting in their hearts the gospel. Everything that Bishop Ferdi did is for the honor of God and to make disciples. And of course, his heart is for the next generation, the campuses. This is one of my favorite quotes from him. Who will cry out for the campuses? Who will cry out for the next generation? Everything he did and everything he does, everything he learned, everything he can offer, he used it for the honor and glory of God. I want to urge you, wherever you are right now, head, heart, hands, use it all to honor God and to make disciples. Head, heart, and hands. Christ is the only one who nourishes our mind with wisdom so great, fills our heart with love overflowing and frees us from anything that stops us to live for Him. Maybe some of you, you need to recenter your life again. For the next 40 or so years, maybe your business, your family, your finances, your effort, your career, your school, everything for the honor of God and to make disciples. Nothing has eternal impact but that. The world will offer some empty philosophies, influence you with all of these things, and make you do all of these things. And my prayers, don't forget who you are in Christ. And you know that Christ is enough. Or as we say, Jesus, period. Let's bow down our heads and let's pray. Lord, I ask right now that you would change our hearts, change our lives. I want to pray for two groups of people right now. If you are here and you know that you have run, ran away from God, you are in sin, you're living your own, you have your own, philo- you're living your truth. You ascribe to those empty philosophies and now you heard the good news that Christ is enough and you want to surrender your life to Jesus. It's not an accident that you're here. With all heads bowed and eyes closed, if you've done this before, no need to do it, but if you know that God is calling you to surrender your life to Christ, Can you raise your right hand and I want to pray for you right now. I see that hand. Anyone else? Thank you for those hands. I want to pray for you right now if you raise your hand. Lord, can you just pray this prayer with me? Lord, kahit pabulong, bukas mo yung bibig mo. Lord, I am sorry for my sins. I used to live for my own. Today, I surrender my life to you. I want to live for you. Thank you for the cross and thank you for the new life. Help me to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen.